got Cubby here, who is the caretaker of Old Endetto for the past, what, 18 months? Oh, yeah. And yeah. on and off for how long? Five years. Five years, awesome. And he's going to give us a little tour of uh, Molly's old homestead, I guess. Yes, and the homestead's left exactly the way it was when Molly left the homestead. Nothing's to be changed at all. Yeah. It's still, uh, originally what you see now is what it was when Molly left. And it, I don't call it a museum, I call it a place frozen in time. Cool. Because it's got modern gear here, but it's, it just shows you how time has changed over the years and different sort of equipment and that. She obviously has adapted. You you still have super old style stuff, no. but you also have a fridge, and that's pretty much how it was <laughs> yeah, on I her last days, huh? Right out to the meat house before fridges. Yes. Ah. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Awesome. But uh, yeah. Well, that's her kitchen. Molly used to make cups of tea and uh, scones for people who come here to stay. Yeah. And uh, in the working days, this was for the stockmen. The stockmen would eat in here. Yeah. And uh, the overseers and all that used to eat out in the next veranda. Ah. The kitchen's actually left exactly the way it was when Molly was here. She used to cook in the middle of summer on that stove. And how she done that, I don't know, because it, the temperatures are in here are in the 60s and don't get out during yes. the day. Only a tin roof on top, yeah, no yeah. insulation, no yeah. nothing. Yeah. Uh, so how was it in here if you had a big sandstorm? I've got a lot of work to do after it because everything just gets covered. You can't see a thing. It's, yeah. it's a matter of how I've had to use shovels to get the sand out of here. How often does that happen? Oh, that can happen nearly once or twice a year, but yeah. I... Uh, had it five times this year. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. The, as soon as you, you're halfway through cleaning, the next minute you're seeing it pour back through, so you just throw the broom in the air and uh, walk off, <laughs> come back when it's gone. <laughs> and when did she die? She lived here till? She, she lived here from uh, her and Mac, her husband, moved here in 1951 to manage the property. In 1954, Mac decided to buy it. Yeah. And then, uh, Mac passed away in uh, 1976. He'd had a heart attack and uh, he tried to land a plane and uh, couldn't make it. And then uh, Molly lost one of her boys. They had three boys. Lost one in a level crossing accident in Victoria. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and another one died of cancer and there's only one alive still, but he did nothing with the property. He went, become an engineer and moved to WA mm -hmm. and uh, Molly used to run the place by herself up to the, the 80s when uh, Mount Dare Cuttle got TB and the Territory Government in its great wisdom made them shoot 38,000 head and go two years stock free well that's when broke mm. and it was going into receivership Williams has brought the property and then uh, to stop the government because they didn't want it turned into a national park and then uh, Costello brought, brought it off Williams's and they, they still own it today, but Old Andado got separated and uh, left 45 square kilometres of ground so it could still be called a working station for tax purposes. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so it is still a working station? Uh, it's declared a working station, yeah. it's not, yeah. Big, yeah, yeah. not big enough really, yeah. not out here. Hmm. And uh, that's when Molly started bringing tourists out here and uh, Open it up for the tourist trade because the old homestead, uh, the house was built in 1922 and the kitchen was added on in 1924. Uh, mm. All the cooking was done on a pit outside before that. And uh, the original homestead that was first built here was made out of ambed nests, bricks. Mm -hmm. But uh, that stuff didn't like the water when we got the floods. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <And> <laughs> Fair enough. It collapsed. But uh, the house is. The main part of the house is main, all the mainstays are made out of uh, the acacia piece, which we call wadi trees, and uh, the, the rest of it's uh, mulga. Mulga, yeah. All the beams are mulga. The white ants can't eat the wadi tree, uh -huh. and uh, they don't touch them because they can't get up to the mulga, but we've got to replace the mulga every now and then because of the water rot. Yeah. 
because the place leaks a bit like a sieve when it rains. Got to move things around yeah. so it doesn't get wet. But uh, no, it's all just pretty well the same. And Molly lived here right up till 2010, and then they she broke her hip, mm -hmm. and uh, they moved her into town. But every now and then she'd still sneak out here, and uh, she passed away in 2012. And they got permission to bury her across the other side of the creek, mm -hmm. which is uh, normally not done. But uh, I don't think there was anyone game enough to say no because Molly done so much work for this country. Mm -hmm. The road from here to Alice Springs, she uh, opened that up. She made that road because the truck was surveyed but never made, mm -hmm. and saved miles instead of going all the way to Fink and then up the Gann Road. She plastered the way through here, dragging a railway line up to a Lambie station. Go down, hitch it, go in, do a shopping, and then come back, hook the railway line back up, and then tow it back home just to make a track. And then it started getting used, and then in '91. That, that's a bin track? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. In '91, the works department then, because everyone was winning, had to come out here with the grader, and they made a proper road out of it. <laughs> awesome. But, uh, no, Molly done a lot for the uh, Bush children, the Flying Doctors, mm -hmm. and uh, the CWA. But she uh, she put a lot of money into other charities as well. But everything she made off this place all went to charity. Mm -hmm. And she started the Pioneers Women's Hall of Fame in Alice Springs, which is uh, one hell of a good place to see because it's got so much history and old things that you just don't see today. Mm -hmm. It's at the old prison in Alice. Okay, and she started that. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so what do we have further on? And, uh, oh, this is all the communications from early days to yeah. today. That's an old mobile phone. <laughs> it used to have a pole with a wire with a hook on it, and wherever there's a telephone line, you could hook it up, and uh, this one. Yeah, you hook it up into had, the wire. Okay. A lot of them had dynamos on the side, but this one here has got four batteries, nine yes. volt batteries in it, and you press your call sign, the exchanger puts you through to uh, whoever you wanted. And then the, of course, yeah, the maintenance on the lines was no good, so the radios come out. Yeah. And Molly used this right up to two thousand. Is that well, that's a HF? This to this, but it's the yeah. same thing. And then uh, eventually they put the uh, telephone in, which is called a HF line. Yeah. It works off the radio tower in the, pa yes. in the campground yeah. there. But it works just like a standard Fine. telephone. Uh-huh. But, uh, yeah. Cool. And the rest of it's just... Oh, it's That's her living room, yeah. over the years. So that was uh, used to be the patio then here, huh? Before the kitchen. Yeah. yeah. This is where they ate the meals. Yeah. This is where the uh, oh, the family, the overseers, the governess, and that it is out here, where the stockmen ate in the kitchen or outside. Yeah. And the little room up the end here, that, that was the governess's room. The best they could do for giving her a little bit of privacy. Yeah. And that's what getting clean it again, too. <laughs> yeah, it's a daily chore, huh? And that was Molly's corner here, huh? That's where oh, you she yeah. used to live to this, sit? This is Molly's corner. She'd do all the sewing here because of the air conditioner. Just oh, yeah. there. I put, put an air conditioner in in yeah. modern days. and yeah. She'd do all the sewing and that sort of jazz there. And it was designed well because the, the windows there are for Molly's bedroom. Yeah. So she had the window open, the air conditioner would ah, blow in. Went in there as well. Cool. As well. Awesome. How long uh, did her kids live here? Oh yeah, they did until they built the new Andado, which was 18 kilometres down the road. They built that in 1960 and they moved there, but Molly didn't like it. Yeah. And uh, Molly and Mac moved back here, but the kids were running the property then. Yeah. And they stayed there. That now is called Andado and this one's old Andado. Yeah. Because it's got named after it, the sales. Yeah. And but what about you, Cup? You, you tell us a little bit about your history. Oh me, well I come from Kajabi in northwest Queensland and uh, I worked on the stock routes and uh, mustering camps for the first biggest part of my life mm -hmm. 
I went into the army. The army taught me there's more to life than pushing cows, bums around the paddock. And uh, I come. When I got out of the army, I went back to uh, stock work for a little while, and then I went to sea and uh -huh. worked on trawlers and all that. Had a fishing boat in Arakoon for eight years, and now I'm back here. <laughs> back in the bush, huh? Yeah. Because yeah. I was here when I was a boy, twice, and then I used to work a lot of the country around here, and uh, we always made sure if Molly had wood, if we were driving past, we'd bring a ute load of wood in. Yeah. So, so you and you were from the early days here, yeah, huh? Yeah. yeah. And I just got a love for the place because, yeah, I'd hate to see it die because somewhere for people to rest and see yeah. and catch up with a bit of history. That Now, an amazing place, and it's so great that you know very few of these things are preserved yeah know? well that, that's why i don't want to see it live yeah that's no, why i'm here awesome and this is molly's bedroom this quilt on the bed <laughs> yeah so I don't see much. molly hand stitched that sitting in that chair in her corner ah it would have taken years i reckon I've been told by quilters that uh, wow. it's Jeez. called log cabin style. It's Molly and the family up with the three boys. <laughs> so we're in the living room. That was the second bedroom? Yeah, that was another bedroom. That's the bed I slept in when I was eight and nine years old. Oh really? Yeah, so I was surprised to see the same bed, not the same mattress worse luck. Like. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I'd had that mattress when I was in it, because yeah, that's a good mattress on it now. <laughs> I believe that. Storeroom here. Yeah. <coughs> the, the wagon used to pull up here, they'd just push everyone's everything oh, straight everything. through there. Yeah. And stack it. And uh <coughs> wasn't much cooler in here. No, nah, but uh, oh, nothing was cool. Yeah. <laughs> but this old camera here, I had a bloke here oh. last year. It's a uh, mapping camera that goes on a plane. Yes. But uh, ah. with the serial numbers and that, this bloke slowly studied it and it, it come out of a World War II bomber. Wow. So it was used for photographing bomber sites. Yeah. And uh, uh, Blokes kept me the archive on it to find out what bomber had come out of and all that sort of jazz and how it got here. Because from what I gather, one of the Clark family was in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. And uh, this place kind of track it down and find out how it come got so here. So he may have brought that back, huh? Yeah. This is a mead house. It was designed to uh, keep the sun out but let the air go through to keep the meat and it kept the temperatures down at a low pace and uh, meat had last a lot longer because this was no refrigeration out here in the good days and uh, this was built in uh, 1904 this and the saddle house down there and uh, Was it that low or did that sink a bit in the sand here? Hmm? Was it that low? No, or it's, bu it's built low like that to keep the sun right out of oh, it yeah, and it enough. still lets a cool breeze come through to Yeah, it. you feel it now actually. That, that quarter of the beast out in the paddock, yeah. bring it up in here and hang it up on this yeah. to settle and then uh, after it settled for a few days they, there was a bar went across there They'd take the cuts of meat off there, put it on this bench here, salt the meat down, yeah. and then rehang it up here to uh, cure. Yeah. And uh, once the salt and the air had put a crust on it so there was no smell, no flies, because one being cool in here all the time. Yeah. And uh, the corn meat and that, there was usually a wire gate, bed went there. Yeah. That's, of course, the corn meat gets soldered down real heavy because make cuts into it to put the rock salt and that cures it mm -hmm. and that was left there to dry and uh, cure and then when they wanted meat they just cut off as many steaks as they wanted and then just re-salt it 
and they washed the steak before they started cooking because of the amount of salt on it. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if it had to, it would keep meat in the summer about eight to ten weeks. In the winter it can do twelve or more weeks. Mm. But uh, most of the time because we're working station they would be killing a beast every four or five days so mm. meat didn't have to last all that long really. That's the only thing I guess you had here in abundance, huh? Meat. Yeah, I had no shortage of meat. <laughs> yeah. But, and uh, native meat, roos or something? Oh, uh, well, sometimes they would, but most of it they'd be eating that on next door neighbour's beef because yeah. we have a rule out here if you want to find out what your meat tastes like, you go to your next door neighbour's barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> you don't kill your own. <laughs> so, no, there's mainly beef, but they, they'd, uh, a lot of them had goats and that sort of jazz, yeah. so they get a change of meat. Yeah. And they'd have tried sheep once, but the dingoes were the healthiest dingoes in Australia. Because, yeah, they were too good for the sheep, so they went what back to... What do you do water-wise here? There's a bore, I would yeah, think? Yeah, but we've got a bore over near the, where the old windmill is. Yes. The bore's there. We've got the best water from Cooper Pedy to Darwin. I have, yeah. Because we're in a stream, not in the artesian basin itself. Okay. And our water's only 15 metres below. So it's not that sulfuric, not that much no, sulfur in it. It hasn't got a, a, as much mineral in that in yeah. it as most of them. And uh, well, I le tell everyone to top their water up here because uh, they won't get better anyway. I will top up now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, mate. Huh? No Greatly worries. appreciate no. it again. No Thank worries. you, mate.